My name's Tom Redmond and I'm the second horn in the Halle. I've been here for eight years. I started working with the orchestra when I was still at college at the RNCM uh, and then for three years I freelanced and then a job came up, I applied and then I got it. So that's how it began. Hello. My name's Tom and this is the Halle. I've always done a lot of education work. When I left college and a bit before I'd been teaching, so about 15 years I've been teaching the horn now, privately and in schools, music services, so that's always been sort of a big part of, of what I do. And when I joined the orchestra I was invited to do various projects, and it's a very important part of what we do. I quite enjoy working with young people to try and get rid of some of the barriers that are sort of perceived to exist between an orchestra and an audience. I find that quite rewarding to sort of try and show that we are actually human. On the other side of the stage are the horns. Now the horns, they can play all of the notes and they can play and much better. I play the horn, by the way. My first education project with the Halle was in Nottingham, just uh, coaching a local youth orchestra. Uh, there was about ten of us just sort of helping out, sort of encouraging them. Uh, there were two horn coaches and only two horns in the orchestra, so they got sort of quite a lot of one-to-one -one help. But yep, that was the first thing I did and then it developed from there going into schools, doing the adopt player programs, more creative workshops and things like that. Well, I started playing the horn when I was nine and I was taken to a concert to see my brother playing in a youth orchestra and they played pictures at an exhibition. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't remember the performance, I just remember the horns and I remember the shape of them and that's what drew me to it. I was about five or six and I said I want to play that, I like the shape and my parents said uh, maybe wait a bit. And I nagged and nagged and nagged and eventually when I had all my sort of front teeth in place uh, they found me a second hand instrument and I started. And uh, that was it, purely on the shape of it. And then I sort of fell in love with the sound and all the other stuff. So. I'm a big fan of Mahler and Strauss for this, sort of all the obvious horn related reasons. Uh, but I also like Sibelius a lot as well. I quite like the bleakness of the music and the way it just sort of very slowly develops and then finally you sort of arrive where he wants to take you. So I like that too. Well, the Adopt a Player scheme is, I suppose, the flagship education program run by the Halle, where we go into schools and introduce ourselves, what we do, play our instruments to them, and I suppose prepare them for the concert they come and see in the evening. And then we go back to more creative work with them based around the concerts that they've seen and the pieces of music they've heard. But I suppose more recently, in the last three or four years, I've been involved in programming and then presenting our school's concerts, Come and Play and Halle for Youth and others, sort of roadshow concerts and things like that. So, yeah, I'm quite heavily involved now, I suppose. Uh, it's a big part of my life here at the Halle. I tend to talk to myself a lot, uh, especially in the car. Uh, that's where I tend to write scripts. I'm not very good at writing down what it is I want to say. I normally have to say it out loud and sort of practice the phrasing of a sentence. So if I'm in a traffic jam, I'm quite often just talking to myself out loud, trying to work out how I'm going to introduce various pieces. In terms of programming, again, it's very much just sitting in the car, listening to music, trying to work out what's appropriate to sort of the theme of the concert. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I do most of my, my homework, I suppose. Right, so it's time for you to do something. You are now going to take part in a world premiere. This is the first time that this song has ever been sung in public, which means that however well you sing it will become a world record. However loudly you sing it, it will be the loudest performance of this piece. So you're setting the bar. Now we've got three more of these concerts over the next couple of weeks. So it would be good if you know the first performance remained the best, but that's really down to you. So what I want you to do is stand up. You can't sing sitting down. Of all the projects I work on, I enjoy the creative ones, but presenting uh, is obviously, that's, that's really good fun. And an enormous challenge to try and engage that many people at once, many of whom may have negative preconceptions of what an orchestra does. So again, it's just trying to explain why what we do is relevant to them and, and try and put it into a context that they understand. And hopefully by the end of it, they do. Certainly no one's thrown anything yet. Uh, and and you know, the feedback from the cause has been positive. Another area that I've really enjoyed working in is Ewan Easton, the tuba player's project in prisons, taking small brass groups and helping them sort of develop their skills. I've only been in for the final concert. And I find that incredible, the courage that it takes for those 
blokes to stand up in front of their peers and perform a solo on an instrument that they've been playing for eight weeks. And you know, it's, it's a very different environment than you would find in, in the Bridgewater Hall, standing up in a Young Offenders Institute playing a solo on a cornet. Uh, and I think it gives them an enormous lift to their self-confidence, their self-esteem, which is the point of the whole project. Uh, and I, I, yeah, I found that really quite sort of inspiring to go in and see them do what they do and take the lessons from learning an instrument and, and you know, get themselves on the straight and narrow.